Hi there, everyone. Um, welcome to my blog again. I hope you all are staying safe. Before I uh, proceed with um, today's discussion on how to talk to your child with autism, I want to give a big shout out to all our first responders, all our healthcare workers, both doctors, nurses, and everyone who's doing their part, the EMRs, uh, police officers, um, everyone, all the first responders who are out there uh, doing such a great job to help us in this time. Um, so thank you so much to all of them. Um, today, I do realize this is going to be um, a topic that maybe some of you are already experiencing, um, is how to talk to your child who has autism about what's happening in our world, uh, in a world that's kind of evolving right now because every day we hear new information and how are we going to pass that to our child whose um, whole life including ours has changed right since this pandemic global pandemic has happened uh, so let me start with um, my powerpoint right So again, um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Krishnan. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and the owner of Healing Synergy LLC. I'm based in North Carolina. Um, before I start uh, this presentation, I want to give a huge acknowledgement uh, to the Autism Parent Magazine. Um, I, when I read the article, I thought, oh my God, such great information wonderful, useful information that's immediately applicable. So why recreate anything? Um, that's why I'm sharing this resource. They have wonderful information, and this is one that I think you can start with in trying to explain to your child what's happening in their world. They talk about uh, the 10 simple steps. Uh, so first you talk to your child. Don't give them this huge medical explanation of what's happening because it might be beyond them right now and might be a little scary for some. Um, so give them a simple explanation that it is a new infectious disease and it started in December 2019. Um, for some children, it might be also beneficial to just let them know that um, uh, the researchers and doctors who are working tirelessly to find a new medicine to help uh, to help with this infectious disease. But again, trying to just keep it very simple. Um, that is a new infectious disease and it started in 2019. I'm sure I can already hear some kids going like, okay, so what's gonna happen then, right? Um, and so you can just let them know that there are tons of researchers, doctors, people in the hospital that are working very hard, tirelessly in trying to find uh, a medication or vaccination. Next is to explain to them why schools are closing because this is really important, I guess right now as I'm speaking to you, the, the schools have already closed, right? Um, but this is gonna interrupt their daily routine and if they don't understand it, you can see certain behaviors that manifest and this is a result and I want you to appreciate and have an understanding that when you see these behaviors, this may be a result um, because their daily routine has suddenly been abruptly changed. Right, so we need to quickly get a routine set for them that they kind of know when I get up in the morning, what to expect, what to do, so that you can help them schedule a whole day at home. Um, grocery stores. Uh, children are very, very keen observers, and I'm sure many of these children are aware or they sense um, the underlying panic. Uh, in the grocery stores, right? Because we're going to go in to get tons of food supply, to replenish, you know, food. Uh, and they might go into the grocery store and wonder, why are the aisles here empty? They've never been empty before. Why is, you know, what the water, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, all gone, right? So you may want to talk to your child before you go in uh, for grocery shopping. If you have to bring your child with you, uh, you know, let them know beforehand uh, that, you know, you may see these things and that's because people need them and they, you know, and uh, when they get the supplies, they will restock uh, those shelves. You want to also look for signs of illness because 
children who can verbalize, they'll be able to tell you that they're not feeling well. But then there are these kids who are nonverbal and they may not be able to inform you that they're not feeling so great. So as a parent or caregiver, it is important for you to look, watch out for these signs, nasal congestion, bloody nose, sore throat, child having diarrhea, um, dry cough, fever, child is tired, or they have difficulty breathing. A um, couple of these, these are very important signs to look out for and observe very closely. Change in routine. Okay, as we know, children with autism need a routine and it's very important for them. Um, and it helps them to anticipate what to expect next. Now, when that routine is broken or changed, they don't know what to expect day to day in the home. And now we have everybody in the home uh, together. Um, you know, where before they might come back from school and it's just them before mom and dad comes back. So again, there's a whole change in routine. Um, I, I know parents who have children with special needs, especially children with autism or sensory issues or ADHD. This might be, uh, you know, a really tough time uh, trying to set up this routine also because now you have many more kids. Maybe you might have had time in the routine before, uh, you know, before your child, the other children come back, you have a one-on-one -on -one time with this child. Uh, but now all that has gotten disrupted, right? So we have to think outside the box and quickly come up with what we need to do, right? So scheduling a, a, a daily routine would be helpful. And if you have other kids, it would be useful, beneficial to also include them. Um, and also if you can get them involved in helping you create the daily routine, it would be wonderful because you also get the buy-in. Um, so again, routines are important and help with anticipation for children with autism. You want to discuss the changes in the routine because it can help the child. As we mentioned before, change is difficult for these kids with autism. And if they have a routine, what happens is they can anticipate. So you want to ex discuss the changes in the routine while we're not going to school right now, or we can't go to grandma's house, or we can't really just go out to the shop anytime we want. So discuss the changes uh, because it can help them anticipate, okay, if we're not going to be doing that, what else can we be doing, right? Um, also, just to introduce to them that there's going to be online uh, classes that's coming up soon. So I, I think there's going to be some form of normalcy uh, in a different way, but people's lives are going to get more structured, especially with school study. A lot of families, parents are working, right? So they have a schedule uh, remotely, I mean. Uh, for those parents who are working remotely. So they have a structure because they need to fulfill their work duties. And I, I think um, once the schools start and the teachers are working tirelessly, as I mentioned before, in getting the online classes and lessons um, to be implemented soon, this is going to help with uh, setting up a routine for your children as well. Now, protective practices, it is essential. It is very important for parents and caregivers to model protective practices. Uh, because whether you like it or not, your children are watching you. You are modeling these practices to them. Um, so definitely to start with proper hand washing techniques, sing the happy birthday song for at least 20 seconds. So the happy birthday song, usually as a rule of thumb, you wanna sing it twice. That will make up for at least 20 seconds or you can use the WHO guidelines, which I've also attached in the next slide, and we'll also have a flyer available um, that you can um, download uh, and print out. And it's not a bad idea to put it next to each sink um, where the children wash their hand or in the bathroom so that they can watch, look at the pictures that are available and wash their hands. Uh, let them know if they sneeze or cough uh, into their own elbow, um, the importance of washing their hand before they eat and after they use the bathroom and to keep the social distancing of six feet, being six feet away. This is what I talked about. Um, I've also used it in the previous vlog. It's very, very essential uh, for us to wash our hands because that's gonna help decrease the spread of the virus or help save us from uh, contracting it. Um, so, Again, how to wash your hands. They go through, you know, wet your, wet your hands with water, apply the soap, rub the palm to palm, rub palm over 
the dorsum that's on the top between the fingers and then palm, palm fingers interlaced um, and then back of the fingers opposing each other and then around the thumb on both sides and then you do circular movements and then you wash your hand. Important part um, is you are going to wipe your hand with the tissue and then use that same tissue to turn off the faucet. Um, start practicing it at home so that when the children go and use a pra uh, the um, public bathrooms or restrooms, it, it's already going to be part of motor memory, right? Um, that they will know like, okay, I'll use the tissue or the napkin to kind of turn off uh, the faucet. Now your hands are safe and clean. There can be stress involved uh, because changes in established routine can cause stress and anxiety for these children. Um, these children might become panic if another child has a cough or sneezes, right? Uh, because these might be their friends. But also to let them know that, yes, uh, but not everything is because of coronavirus. Uh, there's allergies here. I, I know definitely in North Carolina because it has a lot of pollen. So a lot of people are sneezing. Um, but that's because of a different reason. So have an open line of communication. It can help reduce anxiety and stress with your child. Or at least they can ask you and you can explain to them. Staying away from sick individuals. Explain to your child that they may not be around or see a relative, um, a family member or classmate for several weeks until they get better. Uh, this might be hard for them because they may want to just see a grandparent or a friend or a classmate. You, you'll have to tell them, you, well, right now we have shelter in place. Um, but, you know, so that, that kind of uh, decreases that problem. But you need to tell them that you can't see them because especially if a, child, a person is sick, that um, that won't happen until several weeks later. However, the saving grace to that is we can use social media, which is great because everyone's using it. So you can use FaceTime, you can use Zoom, you can use Skype, right, to maintain social connections. And this is a very healthy and important uh, tool that we can actually use to maintain that emotional regulation, that social connection with other people. Supervision plans are very essential, important for parents, uh, with, especially with the schools closed or beginning classes uh, on online uh, teaching, parents need to become more proactive with supervision of their children at home. Um, especially working parents, you may need to work out or seek in-home care. Uh, you may need to get the siblings to help out or the other parent to help out. Uh, so you may need to work around with what you have, whatever resources that you have, because uh, daycares may not uh, be a possibility as they may end up closing depending um, which state you're in. Um, they have they may have guidelines to just close. Uh, so for parents who are now entrusted with uh, these children in the home and they have to also work, um, one of the other activities you have are tons of virtual visits. Uh, and I have it in the next slide. This is just an example like um, the San Diego Zoo, uh, you can do a virtual visit. Not just this zoo, but there's several different zoos that also offer this. Um, so a couple of resources, the zoos, uh, then travel and leisure, you're looking at attraction of uh, many different museums as well. Um, so these are a couple of the links where you can go in there, about 300 different museums, and it's really worldwide that you can pick one country, you can make it fun, you know, where they can just pick one country on the map, world map, and go to their muse uh, to the museums and their libraries, right? Um, so that's going to be really fun. Another very important topic is social stories. I have in almost all my vlogs, I talk about social stories because they're very effective, and it is a great resource to have describing uh, situations, right? So in this case, it'll be really essential, important, and uh, a really nice medium in describing coronavirus and also the changes that the child is now experiencing in their own home and the environment around them. Um, social stories can help with setting up a daily routine and reducing your child's anxiety because they will know what to expect next. If your child's anxiety is reduced, I can guarantee you that's going to help you too. 
Um, so try using the social story. Um, so what I have here is actually what the um, Autism Parent Magazine um, had. Uh, what I did is I just put it in a PowerPoint version so that you can use it immediately. So you can actually use what they have or you can actually replace the pictures here with your own family pictures so that you know the child can identify. So it really depends, but you can try that. But if you don't have the time and resources to do that, you can use what's available right now. However, I just bring this up because some children are very um, particular. So you might wanna just change that to your family picture. Um, also wanna give you the strategies of using it would be definitely before bedtime to read it uh, or, in, or in the day. Um, I would definitely say at least twice a day if you can. If you cannot do that, at least once a day, definitely um, before the child goes to sleep. So you need to essentially do it at least one time a day so that the child understands what's happening around them. So this is a social story to explain the coronavirus to my child with autism. Mom and dad explain the coronavirus to me. Next, mom said, it is a new virus that can be spread when, spread when someone sneezes or coughs. Dad said, it is important to always sneeze or cough into your elbow. If you notice here, they have the pictures to depict what they're talking about, and then they explain it below. Um, Mom and Dad said, it's important to wash your hands before you eat and after you use the bathroom. Um, they said, I should wash my hands long enough to finish singing Happy birthday, I put down twice, two times to make the 20 seconds. So they said I should wash my hands long enough to finish singing the happy birthday song. My parents told me that my school is closed and will be starting online classes. Again, I modified that to, to meet what our current needs are. Um, I feel sad that I will miss my teacher and friends. Here, that's the power of social stories because now you're acknowledging that yeah, I can understand if you're feeling sad, and many of these kids with autism have a flat apex, so they don't really show, but they do have the feeling of you know, missing their friends. They, they sometimes don't have uh, a vocabulary to say that to you, you know, that I'm, I'm really missing everybody, but here's an acknowledgement to them that, yes, I know that you're feeling sad and that you might be missing your teacher, right? So again, I feel sad, I will miss my teacher and my friends. Uh, my parents told me not to worry because I can still see my teacher and friends online. If I start to feel sick, I need to tell my parents. This is very important because if you tell them, they will know what to do. So say, let them know if they begin to feel sick because this is important that they need to tell you as a parent. If I must stay at home, my parents said, I will do some fun things, right? A couple of things that they can actually have is I can play video games, watch movies or bake some cookies. Again, having that, vision, that daily schedule is gonna be really important for you because you can schedule those times in for them to do these activities. I will listen carefully to my parents. I know they love me and want to see me stay healthy. So again, it's acknowledging, saying, you know what, I will listen to my parents and I know that they love me, right? And they want me to stay healthy. Um, so again, this is, immediately usable for you. Uh, you can download it. Um, you can uh, actually replace these pictures to make it your own family pictures and then use it immediately with your, uh, with your uh, child. So thank you again. Um, stay safe. If you should have any questions on how to use um, the social story, do not hesitate to reach me at info at healingsynergyllc.com. I'll be more than happy to talk to you and work with you on how to using the social story, uh, or we could even do a Zoom um, meeting like this to just kind of walk, walk, walk through with you how to use it. So again, thank you very much for listening to my blog. Uh, take care and stay safe.